the purpose of attention, it, it's, 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 it's not the end purpose in itself. It's like, pay attention, yes, good job, okay, job's done. The purpose of paying attention is so we can create meaning. You know, we'd say, well, pay attention so you can get the information, get the right information. Information is sort of the, 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 the science view, the dead, the dead material universe view of consciousness, of, of meaning. Information that's not perceived is, is not even information at all. And if it's not meaningful, it's not information, it's just noise. Right? It's distraction, it's, it's too much information. You know? the, the information that's meaningful is the only information that's meaningful. <laughs> so, so the earth element is about putting together, stringing together the, the symbols, the sounds, the meanings, the images, into our linguistic thinking, our, our, our sense of, of language, of words and phrases, sentences, paragraphs, chapters, books, you know, volumes, our, our fractal organization of those meanings that we get out of our sensory experiences through attention and creating figure and ground and giving meaning to that figure, relating one figure to another figure through classification. Like this is a house, and that's a house. They're entirely different. This one's a tiny house made of, you know, a Hawaiian house. It's made of of uh, some bamboo and some palm fronds, a couple of rocks. And this one is made of rocks and mortar and steel beams and glass. And you know, they're very different in terms of the the, the content. But the context is still house. We live in it. It's a space that we have life inside. So, uh, so that's a fascinating thing about about language and about meaning, and and what comes after that? After because we can think all day long, and so what? I'm thinking. I have sentences. Maybe I'll write them down. Ah, okay. Now there's action. That's a level of action. We're taking that symbolic string of thoughts and we're expressing it. We can speak it. I can speak my, speak my piece, speak, use my words. You know, I can speak my mind. The mind speaks. It's an action, an outlet. And we can write. That's another way. So we can put it out to be received by the auditory system, which is associated with the kidneys, the water element, which is our next level. And we can put it out with the hands through writing to come back through the visual system, which is part of the wood element, which will be our, our fifth element in the cycle and the cycle continues around so so what's the water element about it's not only about speaking and hearing it's also about memory and will because what is will will is our memory of our past thoughts our intention to have coherence transtemporal across time of action that's not random and not always changing but to have action in a particular direction in order to achieve some end if i want to get from here to the ocean if i walk 10 feet at a time i may take a long time to get there if i don't notice what direction i'm going I maybe spin around each time and walk whatever direction i'm facing but if i hold that intention to go toward that palm tree there and keep going, and even if I pass that palm tree and I'm not at the ocean, I'm going to look back and go away from the palm tree. So, so we have reference points in space and time, and we orient toward those with action that's coherent in space and time, and that's how we have an effect on our environment, on the world. So through speaking, through writing, through moving with the hands, moving with the feet, moving our body through space, um, we express the will. And memory is a fundamental function to the will and fundamental to, uh, to action. We have to remember, you know, if I'm going to hit the nail on the head, I better remember where the nail is, right? I better remember where my hand is. If the, if the hammer is out of my visual field, I better be able to feel it and still and visualize and relate those different sensory systems together. Or I might hit my thumb instead. Not as good. The, the kidney is also the repository of the jing, 
the ancestral essence, the, the transtemporal essence of the spirit in Oriental medicine. And that's interesting because we're saying it relates to memory, and it's, that's not only in our uh, own lifetime, but there's generational memory. We now finally have the modern conventional science terminology to, to communicate that with uh, people beyond those who understand homeopathic miasms and, and ancestral Jing essence in Oriental medicine. So now Western medicine is caught up, Western science has epigenetics, da -da, it's the latest thing. Why? Because we can measure it. We now we can measure the genes and they're turned on, they're turned off, and you don't have to change the genes to change the expression of the genes. They, they respond to the environment of the cell. The genes, you know, we've, Western science has been looking at it, that's the brain, it's the control system, that's where all the control is, all the action. That was an idea. It's like saying all the control is in your brain, but, you know, if your brain's not connected to your senses, if you're not seeing, your brain isn't seeing the world, then you're a blind person, and you're not going to be able to interact with that world in an efficient way, visually, and through movement. So the sensation at a cellular level, at a brain level, at a whole person level, the sensory system is essential. It's the starting point. It's our database. What's the quality of the data? If the quality of the data is not good, the thinking can't be good, the memory can't be good, the action can't be accurate. So, uh, so that's water element, and then the wood element is the liver, it's vision. If we look at the, the progression from forming, say, a, a single concept in the heart of a, a word, you know, this, uh, a, a certain meaning, uh, let's say an emotion, okay, grief, or sadness, or love, or anger, we have, each word has its own coherence, its own meaning, that's a, a thing, a stable thing that, that we create in the spirit realm, which is a real world, physical and energetic and conscious. And so each of those has its own meaning. They're distinct. They are also related. They have relationships between them. But it's a single thing. It's not a, not a sentence. It's not a fully formed thought. Anger. Okay, it's an experience. It's sensory. I'm, I'm feeling it. I feel anger. Okay, that's a sentence. I feel anger. There's an I. Feel. There's a process that we're identifying. So you can feel lots of things. That's a field. I'm feeling something in this field of emotions or sensation, and I'm identifying it. Anger. And I'm putting language to it. I'm putting words on I. Feel. Anger. And so that's a sentence. It's a, it's a full thought. It's not all of my thoughts, but it's a single thought. So that moves to the earth element of that thought, thinking. And so what? I feel anger. I, my intention is to identify why I feel anger and correct the cause. Anger is a response to violation. It's a response to something wrong. And it's energy, the ener powerful energy of correction, the ability to correct that. So an appropriate response to the thought, I feel anger, is, could be, to say, hmm, I intend to correct the cause of this feeling of anger. So we can take action. And then if I take action to correct that cause, and, and the correction works, how do I know? Well, I can see it. My world changes. I see, oh, I see that worked. Maybe the difference is uh, I see a change in the behavior of the person that I was angry at. Maybe I expressed, I feel angry when I see you do that. Oh, and they stopped doing it. Okay, I can see that. I get feedback based on my actions in the world. I get feedback, vision is our dominant sense. That's how we get 90% of our learning and our information. Two-thirds of all the nerve current, the electrical current to the brain is through the two optic nerves. And um, that completes, the cycle completes then through that sensory process, the, the visual feedback being a sensation coming through the, the metal element, which deals with bringing in that non-local information, bring it trans, uh, trans, dimensionally across space, even from the stars, 
transdimensionally from across space from the reaches of our body we can feel how is how is consciousness a oneness well it's experienced in this oneness the unity of this this uh, plasmoid field around the brain that uh, in, a, in a saint can even be in this, a glow mode where you can actually see the energy in that field and it's not limited to the head or the skull or the brain it's it's a field that actually extends out as far as we can see which means to the, to the known universe our, our visual space is the space that we see again a person who's nearsighted may be seeing maybe projecting that space into a small bubble small plasmoid around them and a person who's farsighted may be projecting that far away if they're excessively farsighted then it, they're projecting it beyond real space and actually into an imaginary space it's a pushing away of space beyond infinity the actual focal point instead of being here for a nearsighted person or at a far distance for a normally farsighted normal sighted person somebody who's farsighted it's actually a virtual point behind the head so it's very interesting looking at the mathematics of vision because we don't see projected through our eyeballs our physical eyes we know we have a pineal eye in the head too and that's not where we project vision from we project it from what's called the cyclopean eye which is an eye that's a location somewhere between the eyes and somewhere a little bit behind the eyes and toward the midline from the dominant eye it's an entirely different mathematical location than the biological vision eyeballs or, or the pineal and it can change when we change the visual process if we get the two eyes functioning in a more integrated way it will move toward the midline um, so and, the, and it's a mathematical space but again it's not the same as the mathematics of light coming into the eyes it's actually an outward projection which is how the the, the Greeks understood it in ancient times and even today, uh, just recent studies, most grade school children will, will say, yes, I understand vision as a projection outward. And as vision scientists, we know that that's the case. We don't always think of it that way if we're you know, really trained in a materialistic thinking. We think it's all happening inside the skull. The, the, the scientists, neuroscientists will say, the sky is inside your skull. There's a truth to that in that that's where the image is being formed but it's then being projected actually projected into the real world to where we see the sky which may be actually where the sky is somebody who's esophoric where the eyes tend to turn inward because the muscles are tight and their system is acidic will actually project things closer than where they actually are though and that someone who's, who's uh, higher, higher than normal exophore eyes turning outward alkaline state, low low uh, metabolic energy state will project it further than where they actually are and so they'll make errors in spatial temporal judgment like hitting a baseball if you're ESO you'll swing too early and tend to pull it down foul out past third base and the opposite for an EXO will tend to be looser in space and they'll swing too late and it'll foul out by, uh, past first base so the patterns are very uh, important in understanding our behavior and, and performance and, and correcting the patterns involves working with the attentional mechanisms and all of the little bits and pieces that go to build those up into a functional whole <laughs>